Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here to the first Rhododendron Week at the National Botanic Gardens Kilmacara. It is uh, a pleasure to introduce our head gardener here, Seamus O'Brien. This is uh, an extraordinary garden. Those of you who have visited it in the past will know that in spring it is a spectacular site with a huge diversity of rhododendrons. We have more than 180 species growing here and something like 400 plus varieties and uh, cultivars of rhododendron. The garden itself dates back 300 years uh, when the house was built by the Acton family, but it's over two centuries of cultivation of rhododendrons that have brought it to this spectacular position that it sits in now. The purpose of this week is really to showcase the diversity of the rhododendrons here and to share a bit of the history of the, of the collection here and the cultivation of these plants. And it's a, a great pleasure to be collaborating with the Royal Horticultural Society's Rhododendron, Camellia and Magnolia group for this week. I hope in future years, of course, that we will do this in person and you will be able to visit during this period. But for now, it's a great opportunity to reach a much greater audience and perhaps to whet your appetite for the future. The history of the gardens here has been through many ups and downs. And one of the most important moments for it was in the middle of the 19th century when Thomas Acton inherited the estate. He then formed an enduring relationship with the Moore family, and that was David Moore, who was the curator of the collections up in Glasnevin, the National Botanic Gardens. And it had a collaboration of some 70 years between the Acton family and the Moore family, where plants coming into Glasnevin that would not thrive well in the alkaline soils, the drier soils of Dublin, could find an incredible home here in the acidic and much wetter climate of Wicklow. The collections therefore were, were sent down and eagerly shared by the uh, Moore family with the Actons, thereby building one of the best stocked privately owned gardens in the whole of Ireland. And indeed it is, we're able to boast that Kilmacara is probably one of the best rhododendron gardens in these islands, considering the remarkable history of the genus here. In the 1850s, something extraordinary happened with the opening up and discovery of the botanical riches of Asia. Joseph Hooker, who was later to become the director of Kew, the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, had been on an expedition into the Himalaya range, and he had spent a number of years uh, exploring and discovering remarkable rhododendron trees in Sikkim. These formed the basis of an extraordinary publication called the Rhododendrons of the Sikkim Himalaya. In that publication, big folio-sized paintings of 30 new species of rhododendron were not only revealed to the world, but in uh, collaboration with his friend Thompson, Thomas Thompson, J.D. Hooker introduced these species into cultivation. Seeds were sent back to Kew and they were shared with other botanic gardens such as Glasnevin and in turn David Moore brought them down here to Kilmacara and in the 1860s a number of the rhododendrons were planted here such that Moore was able to write to Joseph Hooker uh, in the 1870s and explain he had seen more than a dozen of his species introduced from the Himalaya, flourishing here. So these really whetted the appetite of the big estate owners to build massive collections of rhododendron. And indeed, the Moors recognized that collaborating with private gardens led to a flourishing of the collections. They were growing better here than they could ever grow, either in London in Kew or up in Dublin at Glasnevin. And this tradition continues to this day. As the director of the National Botanic Gardens, you know, it's a pleasure now to realize that we have two remarkable sites, Glasnevin and Kilmacara, and they complement one another perfectly in the difference of climate, soils, and the ability to grow such a big range of plants. Our head gardener here, who has been down here for 15 years and has lived 
uh, cheek by jowl with these plants and developed an extraordinary relationship. And, and it's nice to see that history of the, the moors of Glasnevin uh, and the Acton family continues to this day in that I am able to visit Seamus and collaborate with him in building up the collection here. So Seamus, tell us a bit about what it is like living amongst these giants from the Himalaya range. Yeah, Matthew, I'm really lucky in that I get to live here on the estate. So when I open my windows in the morning time, this is what I look out onto. And it is, as you say, it's a remarkable collection that was formed in what's now generally known as the golden era of plant exploration. So from the 1840s, the, the wonders of the sort of the previously to the West unknown um, botanical wealth of the Himalaya began to be exposed um, by British and Irish collectors. At that stage, there were enormous amounts of Irish people based in, as soldiers or in administration in, in British controlled India. And then later in the 19th century, suddenly China, as a result of the um, opium war and with the treaty ports opening, suddenly there were an enormous amount of people who were interested, of course, in, in plants uh, collecting there, including probably the greatest Irish collector, uh, uh, Dr. Augustine Henry, who was, of course, a, a regular visitor here. So Kilmacurra is a special place. Um, Matthew, you're just one of a, a number of directors of the gardens that since the 1850s have come here to advise. And it began really from the 1850s when Thomas Acton inherited the estate. And he and his sister Janet from the 1850s began to transform what was then a Dutch park, a very rigidly formal Dutch park that had surrounded the house when it was first built in 1697. And it's said that Victorians look back on the 18th century as a very dull period. It was all about geometry, about clipped hedges, about lawns. And then suddenly there was this rush of new introductions coming in from the Orient and coming in from India. And rhododendrons, as you mentioned in particular, so rhododendrons have very specific needs, of course, and to accommodate them, it meant a complete transformation of gardens at the time. So what happened here was that that old garden, um, was a, a lot of it was swept away, and a new wild-style garden was created to accommodate these collections. So as has been stated by various people in the past, that if you want to hunt the plant hunters, the best place to do that is here in the long grass at Kilmacurra. So we have the all of the sort of the famous names of, of early plant exploration. Their collections were raised at places like Kew and Glasnevin, and from these gardens were sent down here because at the time it was recognised that one of the best gardens on these islands for the cultivation of rhododendrons and other plants that like acid soil was here in the gardens. So when you walk through the gardens today, you find this myriad of incredibly important plants collected by people like Pierre-Jean-Marie Jean Delavay, who was a French missionary plant collector in Western China. We also have the collections of people like George Forrest, of Frank Kingdon Ward, of Ernest Henry Wilson, and it just goes on and on and on. But the, the, the major name here, of course, as, as Matthew has said, is Joseph Dalton Hooker, whose collections were sent to Glasnevin as seed in April 1850, sent down here in 1862. And what they formed was the basis of what was to become the largest collection of rhododendron species from Nepal, from Bhutan, uh, and from Sikkim. It became an incredibly important uh, collection. And that collection, it acted as an unofficial annex to Glasnevin. So the, the sort of the, the people who stimulated this enormous collection here that was rated as the best private collection on the island of Ireland up until the time of the Great War were a sib sibling team. So that was Thomas and Janet Acton. So Janet was born in 1824, Thomas in 1826. They both died in, at the turn of the 20th century uh, within two years of each other and they lie buried in the Deer Park within view of the rhododendrons. That was their last remaining wish. So it is a special place and it's had a pretty tragic history because by the uh, 20th century, Thomas had died, Charles Ansley Ball Acton had returned from his, his uh, base in Burma where he was based as a soldier. He took over the running of the estate 
and sadly both he and his younger brother uh, were killed in the First World War. So what that meant was death duties in an eight year space of uh, every time there was a death duty, it was a 40% uh, cut of the estate and it meant that the family had to pay 120% of the value of the estate in death duties. And by the 1950s, Kilmacurra was forgotten. Birds had moved into the house, uh, the garden had closed over and the finest private collection in Ireland just grew over. So from Glasnevin, I guess we'd always watched in and we'd always hoped and, and wished that, you know, that we could sort of um, become involved and rescue the garden. Because as I said, that this garden, it contains all of these incredibly important plants, some of them exceptionally rare. Um, and in 1996, happily, the state bought Kilnacurra and the reason they bought it was that Glasnevin needed an adjunct, it needed a satellite garden. It's always been said that, you know, in pre-independence days, Glasnevin was a Royal Botanic Garden. It was a sister garden to Kew in London, to Edinburgh in Scotland. Instead of whoever chose those sites knew very little about horticulture, they're not particularly good sites for growing rhododendrons in particular. So in 1996, Glasnevin, Purchase became involved in the management of, of, of the gardens here at Kilmacurra and today it acts as its, as its official annex. So we grow anything that can't be grown on the Dublin site. Uh, we've got this wonderful deep brown earth that's acidic. We've got a much higher rainfall. It's far better for growing plants from temperate rainfall uh, regions of, of the world. And um, it's exciting to be able to showcase to you what we have here in the garden. Um, and Matthew, I think um, you're going to talk to us now about what's planned for the week ahead. Exactly. So 25 years ago, as Seamus describes, we would have been standing in a thicket of brambles here. The whole garden had, had disappeared into a, a jungle of overgrowth. Amongst it, of course, rhododendron ponticum. And one can't mention rhododendron without uh, giving uh, credence to the problem of the invasive alien that rhododendron ponticum is. Just one species out of a thousand, but it has given the, the genus a bad name, if you like, certainly here in Ireland where our forests in Killarney are overrun by this invader. But here at the gardens, we have removed all that. And uh, before Seamus became head gardener, Paul Norton did a heroic job of excavating this collection and revealing the glories of the plants that are still here. So this extraordinary relationship, David Moore, followed by his son, Frederick Moore, they, between them, had a dynasty of over 80 years of managing the National Botanic Gardens in Glasnevin. But in that time, they fostered and helped and assisted private owners of big estates all across the island. And this repays us today by the fact that a collection like Kilmacurra here has always had this connection with Glasnevin for the last 160 years and means that taking it back into uh, the ownership of the National Botanic Gardens has enabled us to build again. So during this week, we have a number of interesting video stories we'll be launching and we have live talks as well in the evening. So, on this uh, web page, you will see all the details of those talks. Seamus and myself will be giving a little insight into the history of this site, the history of the connection between the Acton and the Moore family. And we have Richard Baines joining us from the Logan Botanic Gardens, part of the uh, Royal Botanic Gardens of Edinburgh, where he will be talking about the propagation of rhododendrons as well. So there'll be practical advice as well as an insight into the history and some of the glories of the collection here. In some of the video stories, Seamus will be highlighting and showcasing some of these extraordinary plants, many of which are still the hooker originals from the 1860s when they were planted here. So I hope you will join the, through the week these different video stories, live talks that we'll be doing in the evenings, and perhaps next year you will join us in person here at Kilmacara. And of course, Matthew, um, this is a collaborative venture with the RHS Rhododendron Camellia Magnolia Group. So um, one of our members uh, who's head gardener at Mintern, uh, Mark Bobin, he's also going to be presenting uh, to us this week. Yes, so we'll have a video story from himself. So we'll look forward to welcoming you here to Kilmacara in the future. And this will give you a taste of just how extensive and remarkable the collections are here. <laughs>